Well, hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this video is a little bit different from the ones I've been making lately for YouTube. You see, for the last few years, it seems like most of my YouTube videos have been about clocks and watches and stuff related to timekeeping. And I spent a lot of time on those videos talking about uh, the most modern, up-to-date watches and clocks, quartz clocks, atomic clocks, things like that. And so lately, I've decided to show my appreciation, which I do have an appreciation for, uh, older clocks and watches, uh, old designs that have been around for, for hundreds of years, uh, the, the, the technology for you know mechanical clocks and watches. So I thought, in, in, in the same vein, maybe I should show my appreciation for another old mechanical thing. And that's this car right here. This is my 1970 model Ford Torino. This is a four-door sedan. And I like to think of the Torino as the forgotten American muscle car. And I, I know that in recent years, they're not completely forgotten. Uh, but probably the, the, the thing that people remember the most uh, recently would be uh, the, the movie called Grand Torino with Clint Eastwood and uh, his car was uh, you know a, a, a prominent feature in that movie right so there's the Grand Torino there was also one in uh, one of the Fast and Furious movies um, and, and and so yeah people may have seen those but uh, I still think people don't remember much about the Ford Torino oh, oh one more uh, it would be Starsky and Hutch popular TV show from the 1970s, which was uh, kind of reimagined as a comedy spoof with Ben Stiller as a movie uh, a few years ago. So that was a that was a Gran Torino as well from the mid 70s. Um, but as far as the late 60s and early 70s Torinos, uh, I say you know forgotten muscle car because again, when people think of collecting old Fords. It's probably just mainly Mustangs, okay? They don't really think of the Torino. But the Torino does have its place in that history. You see, uh, in the late 60s, early 70s, uh, the Torino was Ford's main entry into the world of NASCAR. And stock car racing at the time really did involve stock cars. You could, uh, if you wanted to pay the premium, go to your dealership and order the same car that was being used in NASCAR. Uh, maybe not exactly the same, maybe not ready to go out and win the race right off the showroom floor, but still, they looked the same, they had the same engines, they had a lot of the same components, and they were stock cars. So the Torino, that, that was a stock car, uh, big in NASCAR, you know, way back then, uh, including, and you remember the, the Chargers that had that big wing off the back, you know, that was another one that if you, if you wanted to, you could... You could get one and drive it around and have it, you know, as your street legal vehicle. But I think that as people think about old muscle cars from the 60s and 70s, of course they remember the, the Mustang, and they're still very highly collectible today. People love the Mustang. But when it comes to Ford, you know, that's kind of all they think about. Uh, when they think about Chrysler, of course, you've got the, the Chargers and Challengers and Barracudas and... Uh, and even uh, you find a nice Dodge Dart, you can, you can get that going nicely. And then of course with Chevrolet and General Motors, lots of cars that people still love fondly uh, for, for, and think of from, from the muscle car era. But I, I think that the, the Ford Torino gets a little bit forgotten. And I wonder if part of that is that uh, it wasn't just a NASCAR, you know, sports car sort of thing. There were many different versions of this car, this, this model year in particular. You could get the, the two-door fastback, and that was kind of, you know, the race car version, the sport version of the Torino. But you could also get one that was just a, a regular two-door, uh, you know, the, the, with kind of the, the regular back on it. Um, you could get that in a, in a hardtop or a, a sedan model. And basically the difference between the hardtop and the sedan was that if you open the door, there's a frame around the window on the sedan. And there's also uh, you know, a piece of the structure of the car in between the front and rear window on the passenger side or the driver's side. Whereas with the hard top, it was, it was open. You know, if you open the door, roll the window down, there, there was nothing there uh, above the window. And uh, if you had both windows open, uh, front and back uh, side windows, there was an open space from that front of the window uh, all the way to the back of the back window. And that was a hard top. So you had the two-door sedan, two-door hardtop, the four-door sedan, and the four-door hardtop. There was also a convertible version of this. There was also a station wagon version of this uh, with, with a few different engines that you could get all the way from a six-cylinder engine 
to the standard 302, to the 351 Cleveland engine uh, that everyone loves so much, to the really big block, you know, 429 engine and some variations on that. So you get your race car stuff and, and everything in between. So I think there were so many Torinos around that were not NASCAR, sports car, race cars that uh, people just kind of thought of them as just this everyday kind of average car. And, and plus, I've, I, I've found that they have a bad reputation for getting rusty. Even back in the 70s, within the first few years, uh, a car like this, in a place where there's lots of snow, lots of salt on the road in the winter, uh, they were reporting, you know, bad rust problems just within a few years, the, the paint going bad, you know, stuff like that. So kind of had a bad reputation, maybe some of it earned, I don't know. But if, if you were able to preserve one, I think, uh, you know, it's a charming, forgotten muscle car from the era. And so uh, the reason I am so fond of the Torino, this one in particular, is that my dad bought one. Not this one exactly, but one that looks an awful lot like it. He bought it new, uh, and that was 1970. That was 50 years ago, literally 50 years ago. It's hard for me to believe that this car is half a century old, but it is. So anyway, my dad, uh, my dad's Torino, um, when we all were old enough to start driving and learn to drive and stuff, we, we, you know, we drove the Torino and we knew that in many ways it was a high performance vehicle. Had a limited slip differential, uh, kind of some anti-sway bars, almost like a police package, almost. And that 351 Cleveland engine was quite a powerhouse for, for a car this size. And, and there were many teenage stunt drivers uh, <laughs> in the area that I grew up. I think by the time I was learning to drive, um, I'd kind of had my fill of uh, riding along with the teenage stunt drivers. Uh, when I drove my dad's old Torino, uh, yeah, it, it was very rusty. It had been repainted sometimes, and you know, we, we did our best to keep it looking nice, but uh, I treated it very gently because I'd already seen its glory days, and while it was capable of, uh, you know, some, some high performance stuff still, I, I, I didn't really do that to it when I was driving, and I, I really appreciated it. However, that car, um, did not last beyond my college years. By the, my, by the time, middle of my college years, uh, you know, I was away and the car just sort of disappeared before I came back. So uh, I always missed that car. But uh, the, the thing was, I was able to find another one. But now, before I tell you that, uh, a, a little bit more about the history of the uh, Torino. And I want to take it back to the 1960s when Ford had a very popular car, the Falcon. Okay, and the Falcon, kind of like the Torino, uh, in its day, there was a two-door version, a four-door version, a station wagon version. I think there was a convertible version. There were a lot of different uh, variations on the Falcon. And in fact, uh, according to my research, the very first Mustangs were actually kind of repurposed Falcons. Uh, basically, you take uh, the drivetrain and, and, and the basic structure of a Falcon and put a, uh, you know, a Mustang body on it and that's kind of what the first Mustang was. Now by the time the first major body style change happened for the 1967 year uh, Mustang, uh, that model year Mustang, uh, it, it by then come into its own and, and you know had its own specific designs and stuff as a as a, a really popular sports car uh, in the Ford lineup. So uh, but, but uh, the Falcon name lived on for just a few more years and also there was a Ford Fairlane and by, you know, like 1968 uh, model year, I believe it was, the Fairlane Torino was, was an offering from, uh, from Ford. And then they kind of phased out the Fairlane name and kept Torino. But uh, they were using that style of Torino in NASCAR racing uh, in the late 60s until uh, this body style came around in uh, the 1970 model year. And so uh, by then, uh, I think there were some maybe still that had this body style that were called Fairlane. I don't know. There was one more final blast for the for the Falcon. The 1970 and a half model year Falcon looked just like this. Uh, if you saw them from a distance, you could not tell the difference between the Falcon and Torino if, if it was that specific, you know, last iteration of the Falcon for the American market. So there you go. I think the Falcon kind of was the ancestor of the Mustang as we know it. And the Mustang, of course, uh, for the next, you know, more than 50 years has really made its own identity out of that. The Fairlane also kind of was the, uh, the forerunner of this Torino. Then in 1972, let me, let me back up. 
This was the body style for 1970 and 1971, those model years. But it, the 1972 model year is when they introduced uh, the Grand Torino. There was still, in 72, there was a Torino and a Grand Torino. Uh, and uh, I don't know how different they were other than you could tell by looking at the grill. The uh, Grand Torino had kind of a smaller grill and the headlights sort of separate, whereas the regular Torino had a grill that encom uh, encompassed the headlights as well. And so um, a lot of people remember, of course, Grand Torino as a kind of car. And I, you know, it, it's okay with me. I won't get too upset if you call my car, oh, look, he's got a Grand Torino. Um, all right, that, that's fine. I'm, I'm not going to get bugged by that. But technically, this is not a Grand Torino. There were no Grand Torinos before 1972. And even in 1972, some were Torinos, some were Grand Torinos. But uh, through the 70s, you know, the cars got bigger uh, due to um, emission control regulations. Uh, the engines became a little less powerful, even the same engine you know, running with all the emission control stuff added to it, a little less powerful. So the muscle car era sort of ended uh, in, in by about 1973, 74 in there. You know, but uh, they still had the Starsky and Hutch style uh, Torino around, and they were still making the, the four-door and the station wagon versions of Torinos. They had, they came up with a Torino uh, a Brome, I think it was kind of a, lug they tried to kind of make it a big luxury car and then by, you know, 1977, 78, somewhere in there, they just kind of discontinued the whole thing. And the big American cars uh, with the big V8 engines were just kind of going, going away at that point. Uh, so, so that's kind of the history of this, uh, this Torino. And then uh, what about this specific car right here? So here's what happened. So, uh, you know, years after I was done with college and, uh, you know, you just never saw Torinos anymore. People don't collect them. Right? They collect Mustangs or, or Chevys or Pontiacs or something, but they don't really, nobody collects Torinos, really, really? It's a very small group. I know someone out there is going, well, I have one. Okay, I'm gonna to talk to you in a second. Uh, but anyway, um, so uh, my brother and I, uh, he, he, he started it, <laughs> started looking on eBay uh, to see what was out there. And we found this car on eBay, uh, through eBay. The car was in Baltimore. And uh, we, we managed to make a deal. I went out to Baltimore and bought this car from a nice young man out there and uh, brought it back home here. That was 15 years ago. And uh, at the time I thought, wow, just amazing I was able to find one that old. Now here it is 15 years later and the car is literally 50 years old and still in great shape. I just took it out of long-term storage a, a moment ago. It needs a little bit of attention, you know, but it's still in great shape and uh, I, you know, unrestored and I think I'm just gonna kind of leave it as is and uh, you know, and enjoy it for what it is and you know just keep it nice and you know see how much longer it, it can go but uh, certainly not taking it out on the roads in the winter with snow and salt and anything like that we're just gonna we're just gonna enjoy this okay now even though it needs a you know needs a little bit of loving care here and there uh, I think that in in general I can declare that this is probably one of the best if not the best four-door Torino of this particular body style uh, from this particular model year in existence in the whole world today. And I, I only, I make that claim because it's such a non-collectible car, okay? And if anyone does collect Torinos, they're going for the, you know, the, the Cobra Jet version or Torino GT or something like that, or at least a two-door car. Sometimes the, the, uh, the station wagon, some people might think that's a novelty and they'll collect that. If there's a convertible version, certainly people would like that. But uh, as far as the four-door sedan, I'm telling you, I'll bet there are very, very few that still exist anywhere in the world. And of those that do exist, I'm tempted to uh, assume that this is the best, uh, the one that's in the best condition in all the world. And if I'm wrong, please, someone share with me <laughs> pictures and videos and information about your uh, 1970 four-door sedan Ford Torino that's in uh, this kind of shape or better. Let me know. I would love to find out about that. But in the meantime, I'll, I'll take good care of this one and we'll, we'll see how, how much longer it goes. So uh, I'll make that claim, best one in the world, and I hope I'm proven wrong which will not diminish in any way how good this one is, 
but it'll it'll be nice to know you know who's got one that's better okay so uh i know that if, if those of you who've been watching my uh my my watch videos and uh the way i collect like casio watches you're probably saying well it's a good thing casio doesn't make a car like this <laughs> it's, it's a good thing that the torino in 1970 was not made by casio because if it were greg would be the kind of guy who would uh, try to find another one <laughs> <laughs> that looks just like it, except maybe it has a different color or something. And uh, that's the kind of, that's the kind of uh, eccentric guy Greg is. And uh, all I can say to that is, I'm way ahead of you. So yes, it's true, within two years after I found this one, I'm looking on eBay again, <laughs> and I saw that one, also back out uh, on the East Coast. And uh, what happened was, I th the pictures of that one looked so good, I thought, uh-oh, what if that one is in better shape than this one? And here I've got so close to having the, 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 the one of these that's in the best shape uh, of any of them in the whole world, and what if that one's out there and someone else gets that one? And, uh, and, and here's, the, here's the thing, I think that if I sold this car, and even if I didn't buy it way back 15 years ago, um, if, if this car left my possession, I think the first thing that would happen is somebody with a, with a Ford uh, Torino GT from uh, 1970 or 71 would strip this car down and take everything they could and use it to restore their sports car. And uh, so basically from the steering wheel forward, it would all become uh, you know, part of a restoration project for another car. And then everything else would just go to the junkyard. And so I just thought, well, that, that could be the fate of this car. That could be the fate of that car if, uh, if I didn't have them, because I don't know if anyone else <laughs> would even appreciate them. So I have that one. And as it turns out, it's not, the, the condition is not quite as good as this one. However, uh, it's really, really good. And uh, with little care, you know, that thing could be uh, just, you know, top notch. This one has the standard 302. That one has the 351. So between the two of them, they're kind of, you know, both uh, in honor of the, the one that my dad purchased uh, so many years ago. And it's, it's, it's mind boggling to me to think that together, <laughs> we combined, these two cars come out to being 100 years old. If you can, <laughs> this is, 100 years worth of uh, old car here and that just pff, i can't believe it you know when i was learning to drive in the 1980s the idea of a 50 year old car from the 1930s would just be like from a different planet almost and so here i am again now i have uh, two 50 year old cars are right here in my driveway right now and that's kind of just kind of astonishing and amazing but uh, they are both uh four-door sedans and uh, I, so now i'll make the claim <laughs> that even if they're, neither one of these is the one that's in the best condition of any that are still surviving in the world, I still think that I'm the only person in the world that probably has two of them. Again, I'm going to be very specific about this. 1970 model year, four-door sedan, uh, and, and I, I think for, for one person to have two of them, uh, I, I may be the only one in the whole world. Um, but if I'm wrong, please, someone else, uh, let me know. And, uh, you know, I thank you for uh, taking good care of uh, a couple of old cars like this. In fact, when I was a teenager, uh, there was this rivalry, of course there was, between, uh, you know, your favorite muscle cars, right? So some people, I really love Mustangs, I really love Fords, or I really love anything from Chrysler. I, I love, you know, the Hemis, I, I love all that stuff. Or I love, uh, you know, General Motors, I love Camaros, I love, you know. And, and, and these groups kind of never really uh, overlapped, you know. <laughs> So if, you, if you love Camaros, it means you had to dislike, uh, you know, Chryslers and, uh, and, and, uh, and Fords. And maybe even you didn't like Firebirds because they were kind of, you know, getting into the Camaro territory and stealing their thunder, that, that sort of thing. And I have to say, I, I had some of that uh, sense of rivalry myself as a teenager uh, in the 80s. But uh, that's, that's gone now. And if I go to a car show today, and if I see someone who has a really nicely restored car of any kind. I, I think that, that there's a person that is doing the Lord's work. This, 
this is great. Now, even if it's the kind of car that only one person would appreciate, even if the condition is not perfect, if I know that there's one person who is, uh, you know, got in his heart uh, the idea of taking care of that car, and it means something to them to keep and preserve that car in whatever condition it is, again, bless you, uh, that, that's great. So even though I, I'm partial to this, you know, there's, uh, there's of course other people that love other kinds of cars and more power to you, literally thank you. And, uh, and please, you know, um, keep, keep doing it. I, I encourage you, whoever you are, uh, take care of a nice car that you, even if you're the only one who thinks it's nice, more power to you. And, and, and anyway, but thanks for watching this. Um, I, I forgot to mention one other style of the Torino. Okay, bonus here. Uh, <laughs> I, I said, you know, two door, four door, convertible, station wagon, uh, fastback. How about the Ranchero? Okay, people forget about the Ranchero because they, mostly they think of the El Camino. When you're thinking of a car that's basically some kind of, you know, hybrid here where the, the front of it looks like a, a car and the back of it looks like a pickup truck and th people always think of the El Camino. Um, but there was also Ford did the idea as well in the Ranchero. So way back, you know, in the 60s, early 60s, maybe the Falcon, there was a Ranchero version of the Falcon. Um, and then that became, by the time this, this was out and into the 70s, uh, the, the Ranchero was based on this Torino design. So, uh, yeah, so hats off to the Ranchero because you could get, and this, this is amazing to me, you get a Ranchero with that 429 engine in it <laughs> and, and, a, and a manual transmission. It'd really have a really souped up sporty Ranchero uh, if you wanted to. So if, if any, you know anyone with an old Ranchero that has this body style uh, from, the, uh, from the doors forward, um, hey, more, more power to them. And if that's you, more power to you. So, so thanks for that. All right, well, I guess that's all for now. And uh, thanks for watching this. Uh, if, you have, if you have any suggestions about other car videos you think I should watch, or if you, if you know more about Torinos yourself and you want to share uh, in the comments section some of your thoughts and uh, you know, some of the links to your videos or, or whatever, anything you know about, about these long forgotten Torinos, uh, it'd be fun to share that for a little while. And, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to make more videos coming up soon. Probably not a lot of videos about these cars, not yet. It's, it's getting to be winter, but uh, maybe maybe in the spring. And, uh, of course, I've got my watch videos all over the place. Uh, so you, you can watch those as well. Thanks for watching now again. And I will see you in the next episode of whatever it is I decide to put on, on YouTube.